Tickle, and on this episode of American Reef, we're going to talk about why the new reef hobbyist needs to stay far away from feeding pellets and flake foods to their reef tank. give three reasons why that new reef hobbyist has to stay away and not feed flake foods and pellet foods into their reef tanks, right? Um, and these ones are just common sense, kind of easy reasoning that anybody will be able to understand and actually prove if desired, right? Speaking of which, if you are like a really curious reef hobbyist looking for like, again, fish nutritional studies, etc., there are a few, I shouldn't say a few, there are a ton of universities out there, be it uh, Kentucky, Alabama, Auburn, I mean, there, there's, there's a ton of them that basically have a ton of nutritional studies done on, on fish, basically in support of aquaculture. Right, aquaculture is a big business, and there are tons of universities, excuse me, basically supporting those studies and those businesses. So you can check them out. So now let's get back to reason number one. The first reason why I say the new hobbyist should, and I qualify that as new reef hobbyist, should stay away from flakes and pellets is they will spend way more money. Like when I say way more, I mean like hundreds, maybe thousands compensating for the bad effects that are occurred from feeding basically flakes and pellets. And it's really a combination of being a new hobbyist and the food itself. Why do I say this? It's really, really simple. Ultimately, these foods, right, the flake foods and the pellets, right, they have all these ingredients and those ingredients are held together to make that flake or to make that pellet, right, by binders, right, by basically starches, carbs, you know, things like flour, for example. And the issue is fish cannot digest flour, right? It's bigger than that. Actually, fish can't digest like the carbs and the starches, right? They lack an enzyme called amylase, right? So that basically the fish will eat the food, right? Absorb no nutritional value from those binders, expel it into the water column. From there, once it hits the water column, then it starts to break down, right? It'll get caught in your rock work or wherever, right? And then that's when the fun starts, right? Because now your phosphates start to rise, your nice nitrates start to rise, you start to do water changes, right? Lots of water changes mean you're buying more salt, more filters, um, again, more time, more test kits, right? And you're still chasing more numbers, right? So you get more filters, right? Meaning you'll get another skimmer, et cetera. And this list goes on and on. And what happens is it's kind of like a scale thing where ultimately you're putting way more nutrients in there that you have to kind of get them out. And so until you understand reef keeping fundamentals, what will happen is that new hobbyist will chase those numbers and end up spending tons of money, right? Getting frustrated beyond belief, right? And, you know, that's why a huge percentage will just drop out of the hobby um, just because they can't get a hold, right, of some of the fundamental concepts, right, that will allow you to keep your, again, parameters in line, you know, your water chemistry, etc. cetera. Um, now, if you don't believe me on those binders, for example, simple Google search, right? Uh, do a Google search on some of the, we'll say, top three 
um, we'll say marine foods that like new hobbyists gravitate to when they're looking like for flakes and pellets, right? Um, whether that's ocean nutrition, uh, new life spectrum, omega one, I mean, those are probably the top three that come to my mind, but there's a ton of them out there. And when you look at their ingredients list, you'll find that usually like, you know, third on that list, second on that list is wheat flour. Right? And again, it cannot be digested whatsoever. And so when you look at it, those nutritional labels, right, they're exactly like our nutritional labels for the food that we buy, meaning you know, the ingredients that are closer to the top of that list basically contain the majority of that ingredient or you know, there's a higher amount of that ingredient in that food. So being you know, second or third on the list and it's a binder that you get no nutritional value is just a bad thing. And ultimately, um, what I'm saying here is, again, for the new reef hobbyist, it's a bad thing. Not all pellets and flake foods are bad, but it's the combination of not knowing reef tank fundamentals and what to feed and how to feed and, and all those sort of things um, versus like what you are feeding, right? And so that combination is just a bad combination to start off with, right? Um, you'll find that some of those brands have specialty pellets that are really, again, that are a decent product. And as you get more experienced in the hobby, you'll learn to supplement and, and basically bring a wide variety of foods to your fish. But until then, stay away from pellets and flakes. <music>
good bacteria that help that fish absorb right, the nutrition in the foods. Right? Um, well, if you look at like flakes and pellets, for example, those things have to be baked in high heat. What kills bacteria? High heat. So the only way to get probiotics into these pellets or to get them into the flakes is to soak them after the fact. So now again, more time, more money. Again, it just keeps on added up. And don't get me started on the medicine side, right? If you have to medicate a fish, right? Whatever medicine you do, the only way that it will be affected is if it goes inside the, you know, the organism's belly. Um, there are exceptions to that, right? Don't get me wrong, but in general, fish need to eat the medicine. Well, by the time you take and buy that medicine and soak it, right, into the flakes or into the pellets, right, ultimately it'll make that food, like, again, not palatable and the fish don't even eat it. So when you put it in him or, you know, put that in, you know, the fish, right, and they don't eat it, then it goes in the water column and now you end up basically medicating, you know, the rocks or whatever and it breaks down and it adds all that. Again, you get the idea. It's just for the new reef hobbyist, it's a bad idea, right? You could be spending your money more efficiently, right? And ultimately giving your fish and other organisms higher nutritional content by just staying away from those items. Now, again, in the grand scheme of things, flakes and pellets, they have a use in the reef tank arsenal, right? Automatic feeders for when you're on vacation, right? Or when you're at work or whatever. There, again, there's plenty of reasons to use flakes, to use pellets, right? But for that new hobbyist, what you really need to do is get those reef fundamentals down first, right? That you hear chasing numbers all of the time, right? And part of the reason why you're chasing those numbers is because of those nutrients that you dump into the tank. So ultimately the goal, dump less nutrients in, and then you don't need as many kind of filtration processes, gizmos, gadgets, etc., to remove that nutrition. That being said, if you do need those gizmos, gadgets, etc., you know who to look at, right? We've got Bulk Reef Supply, right? We've got Tunzi, we've got Premium Aquatics, we've got ecosystems out there. Uh, again, all good, honest guys that deserve a chance to earn your business, right? Uh, again, give my sponsors a chance to prove why they've been in this hobby for a long time, right? I'm Russ Kickle, and thanks for watching this episode of American Reef.